And while driving, lawmakers want to make sure both of your hands are on the wheel and not somewhere reaching for your cell phone so you can text or email someone. Detectives here at the police department and other community leaders say there's no reason this nine-year-old should be dead. This is just some of the aftermath from last night's storm, but the homeowner has a much bigger problem, this tree trunk, getting it out of his front yard. Take away our TV5 lights, it pretty much looks like this, a sea of darkness. So that's pretty much a good indication why you should have a flashlight. Thousands are without power after a massive storm left as much as 30 inches of snow across the region. People in this neighborhood have stopped by. They built this makeshift memorial, balloons, teddy bears. And half the day we'll start to see some clouds and we won't be that big. I just had to adjust my chair so I don't look so tall next to you. <laughs> because really she's tall and I'm like really, really short. <laughs> Let's take a walk and look closely. This entire block of Burlington that's taped off is where those shots were fired. It looks like Hollywood has a new superstar <laughs> on the way. We'll check back in with you a little bit later. Michigan State fans are celebrating tonight after a very stressful win. We want those phones to ring. I'm standing by with Rachel, who literally just got off the phone. Who are you chatting with a moment ago? Um, I you keep working those phones. I've seen her over here picking up the phone. We want you to keep calling. I'm going to send it back. The limelight was jumping late Saturday night. It was business as usual. Five minutes to get up off our property right now. This Five is the sidewalk. Everyone was welcome but us, but no one should have been here because of this piece of paper. It's a city ruling forcing the owner, Willie Copeland, to shut down until he obtains a business license. The city gave him this notice three months ago following the death of 27-year-old Stefan Brandon. Brandon was shot and killed outside of the club. When we first told you about this story, city attorney Tom Fancher told us if Copeland ignored the order, he could be in trouble. He could be subject uh, to ticketing, uh, to prosecution, and also to uh, uh, the police vacating the premises because he's not permitted to have the activities there. But video from this weekend shows two Saginaw police watching club goers make their way inside the location on East Genesee. We shared this with attorney Tom Fancher and asked what's going on. Um, I haven't been informed before today uh, about any violation of this. Um, he's indicated to me that he's not operating and that's the, the latest information I have on it. We also asked Chief Gerald Cliff why the officers didn't do anything. He pointed the finger back at the attorney who issued the notice. Chief Cliff refused to talk to us on camera today, but released this statement saying, quote, Mr. Fancher generated the letter ordering them to close. He has to tell us what violation he wants enforced. The owner of the club, Willie Copeland, insists he does not need to obtain a business license because his business is a nonprofit organization. Nevertheless, late this afternoon, we checked with the IRS, the local United Way, as well as GuideStar. The limelight was not listed as a nonprofit. On Mother's Day, this lady helped her teen daughter and niece rob a Saginaw Valley exchange student. Teach her a lesson. Don't worry, Yolanda Leal has been charged. More on that in a moment, but first. They were just beating on her with their fists. William Kulo was driving in the area when he noticed that 23-year-old student walking along Schuss near Barnard with grocery bags and a purse. Then, all of a sudden. When I first seen it, I thought it was just three kids getting together and playing until I seen her knock the one, the two knock the one girl down and then start hammering on her. But it was no joke, and investigators say that mom was in on the attack. She was the person behind the wheel, and she was driving drunk. I mean, I was moving. Turns out this 72-year-old wasn't going to let those robbers get away. He put the victim in his truck and took off, following the mom and the girls to this hotel. Once he got there, Kulo pinned Leal's car in with his truck until police showed up, taking a few hits himself. Well, she put her bumper against me. If she wanted to run me over, well, then she'd have had some flat tires. Meantime, Leal has been charged with multiple counts, including child abuse. Her two-year-old grandson was in the car as everything unfolded. The teens are in a juvenile detention center, and that student was taken to a hospital. She had a few cuts and bruises. As for this good Samaritan, he says he wouldn't think twice about doing it again. Johnny on the spot, and I did what I had to do. Reporting from Saginaw Township, I'm Adrian Broadus, WNEM-TV5. 
The 60-page report the I-Team obtained recommends ways Saginaw can cut costs. The study, which was conducted by a company based in Southfield, cost taxpayers $47,500. Here it says the 12-hour shift change is costing the city about half a million dollars a year. That's not the cost savings originally projected when implemented three years ago. But this line on page 51 is the crux of the controversy. In bold font, it says eliminate mandatory overtime pay, a move that would save the city $325,000 a year. As the story goes, patrol officers and command staff receive four hours of overtime pay. It's built into their schedule. It really doesn't bother me because it's nice to know that we have somebody out there protecting our interests. At the same time, the taxpayers feel it too. The report came out months ago in January. The I-Team raised the question, why hasn't the department followed the listed recommendations? I spoke with Chief Cliff this afternoon and he says they can't. It would have to be negotiated as part of a new collective bargaining agreement, yes. That's, that's the only way we could do that. Chief Gerald Cliff says the contract can be renegotiated in three years, but for now, schedules can't be changed. We are aware now that it's costing us more now that we've had it for a couple of years and that it's, that it's um, something that we need to look very, very closely at correcting. And I'm sure that when it comes time to negotiate the next contract, that's going to be very, very high on the priority list for the city. Katie, tonight the family is relieved but still devastated. They've been through a lot over the past three years, and I spoke with them up on the fourth floor here at the courthouse about the man who killed their daughter. I pray for them every day that they heal. Just as trial was set to start, Gary Shepard pleaded no contest to killing Crystal Spear in a drunk driving accident in 2007. For them to lose their baby, I know how they feel. I have children in my home. I understand that the defendant has a child of his own, and I, I don't feel one bit sad that he doesn't get to see his kid grow up because I don't get to see my sister grow up. Today, three years later, Shepard was sentenced up to 25 years in prison. And I don't think it's fair, and I don't think six years minimum is time enough because she was 12. That night, Crystal was riding her horse, Buster. Her brother Mike overwhelmed with grief as he addressed the man who killed his sister. I was the last one to see her alive and uh, I was the first one to see her dead. Indeed, Crystal's mom Darlene is relieved the wait for justice is finally over. It's been a long, long time coming. But the pain is still so raw. He left my little girl laying on the side of the road and run away. Whatever he gets in life, he deserves. Thank you. Millions of people in Haiti who were uprooted by the powerful earthquake in January are bracing for yet another act of nature. So how low will the temps fall? Meteorologist Cindy Altoff is in the First Warren 5 Weather Center with a look. Cindy, just the other day we were wearing shorts and sandals. Now it's back to the sweaters. Breaking news right now. A very historic night after years of debate. A health care reform bill passes. And right now President Obama is speaking about this bill that passed. Let's listen in. A system that works better for the American people. You just heard from President Obama as he makes the case about why he thinks this bill is good for our country. Good evening, everyone, and thanks for staying up late with us tonight. I'm Adrian Broadus. Let's just go back a little bit in time. Can you tell us how it felt during your childhood in the 60s when you walked with your father and Dr. King? Did you know back then that you were making an enormous social change? 